Hello everybody, my name is Cecil Konijnendijk and I'm a professor of urban forestry and I have the great pleasure to talk to you about the history of urban forestry. The learning aims for the lecture today are uh, to describe some of the historical roots of urban forestry. Where does this concept come from? Uh, and especially also how has it evolved from the long-standing relationships uh, yeah, between cities and trees and cities and forests in general? Because of course, as long as we have been developing settlements as humans, we've also been bringing trees with us into those settlements. And these relationships with trees are really long-standing evolutionary. So we have co-evolved with trees. And, and some theories say, well, actually, we come from the trees, we come from the forest. And of course, that has meant also that we wanted to have trees with us, even when we started moving into um, environments where nature was not so present. Initially, we had this kind of utilitarian uh, use of trees and nature. So we, we brought trees and nature into our cities for food, for fodder, for construction purposes. Um, but later, that actually started developing more into kind of recreational uses, and especially the, the elite, those in power uh, in our society, they actually started creating nice estates and green spaces in and around cities that they could use for their private pleasure. And often this was also done for hunting purposes. But of course, gradually, and especially towards the end of the 19th century, we see an opening up um, of many of these green spaces, and as well as an establishment of new green areas for recreational purposes for the wider public, under the recognition, really, that people needed to have good green spaces for their health, um, as well as finding ways to actually spend time with their families as well in a responsible way. And of course, that has evolved then to a much more multifunctional use of green spaces, where we focus on things like climate adaptation, biodiversity, water conservation, uh, and many other functions uh, today. This, interest, this article gives this really interesting perspective, I think, on, uh, on how we have co-evolved, uh, how the evolution of people has gone with the evolution of trees. So it talks about the impact of ancient tree form uh, on our current preferences. And I can really recommend it to get an idea of how we psychologically connect to trees and how this can partly also be explained from uh, the evolutionary perspective. So cities across Europe and across the world have long histories of bringing trees into their fabric. Uh, and as I said, it started with more utilitarian reasons uh, for food, etc. But it started developing already in the late Middle Ages and especially during the Renaissance towards more, more recreational purposes, beautifying the city. And there's quite a lot written about the history of trees and forests in, in cities. A very specific um, part of that interaction that we've had with trees and forests is that with, uh, between cities and city forests. So you see cities like Haarlem here on the top left, uh, as well as here uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia, have built long-standing relationships protecting nearby forests and using them for multiple purposes as areas where they could get uh, timber, firewood, they could graze their animals, and then more and more also functions like recreation, but also protecting uh, for example, hillsides, protecting drinking water resources. And these city forests have really become a European phenomenon that to a really important part is also lies also at the roots of urban forestry. If you move elsewhere in the world, you see uh, slightly different relationships, but also really a focus on the many benefits that green spaces provide. So a famous landscape architect in the US, Frederick Law Olmsted, you see him here on the top right, um, he really developed a lot of um, high profile green spaces and parks and actually networks of green spaces in American cities from the purpose of uh, people being able to experience nature, recreation, public health. And of course, the most iconic example of this is Central Park in New York, which he co-designed with uh, Calvert DeVoe. And Olmsted really was influential in, um, in instigating a movement in North America that we call the City Beautiful Movement. And they was really here to build uh, parks, green spaces, to have a lot of flowering plants, and so to beautify cities. And I think this really played an important role in how we conceptualized a more structural approach to greening cities. So this was picked up across the world, I would say. And this is the example of Copenhagen, where green spaces that were royal before and were often closed off were opened up to the public for their recreational benefits. And also the finger plan, as you can see here on the top left, was created. So this idea that Copenhagen was like a hand 
extending into the countryside, but in between the fingers, there would be green spaces, ensuring that actually everybody would always have good access to green spaces for recreation. Green spaces became really a phenomenon across the world, obviously, countries like China were quite um, active also in opening up some of those uh, former imperial gardens, etc., but also creating new green spaces. And there was often a bit of a political uh, motivation behind it. Offering green spaces to people, uh, offer them with, with uh, good ways of spending their free time, being outdoor, being healthy, uh, and also spending time with their families rather than maybe doing other activities that were not so preferred by those in power. So urban forestry really starts building off of that. Uh, it starts really focusing on the trees and forest component of urban green spaces. And it starts being uh, coined uh, in the 1960s in North America. But as you've seen, there's a long history uh, leading up to it. And actually already in the late, uh, 18, uh, late 1800s in the Northeastern part of the United States, some people started using a term urban forestry as referring to the management of trees in cities. But it was not yet a discipline at that moment, but it started really to, um, to trigger the attention of, uh, of experts across the United States. So more about it in one of the other lectures in the future. And I thank you very much for listening to this, uh, to this lecture. Thank you.